Congratulations, everyone. You've survived AP World History Unit 1, the Global Tapestry, or as I've called it, the hodgepodge of various nations kind of tossed together and quick review. It's fine. We made it because we are that awesome. We're focusing on the networks of exchange. We'll be looking at the Silk Road, Indian Ocean trade, Trans-Saharan trade, and the rise of empires, not only that made it possible, but that were made possible by trade. First, we're going to be looking at the Silk Road and Indian Ocean trade. And what I want you to do is just take a quick look at the major trading path, which you'll find in orange, but then various connectors to new cities that would rise up. And of course, Indian Ocean trade. The origins of the Silk Road, we can thank pastoral nomads. We can thank China. We can thank ancient Mesopotamia, Iran, and the Mediterranean Sea regions, and that does include Rome. There were two periods of heavy use of the Silk Road, 100 BCE to 907 CE, and then the 13th through the 17th centuries. The origins of the Silk Road lie in a couple of different things. We're looking at China's demand for goods, Rome's demand for goods, and then the people who were able to not only secure these goods, but profit off it, Central Asian nomads. This trade was fostered by two major demands. One is in China, and that's the demand for Western products, specifically horses, as well as new crops, medicinal products, metals, and precious stones. In exchange, China exports peaches and apricots, spices, and manufactured goods such as pottery and paper, but also silk. Silk, in particular, was a huge demand, especially in the Roman Empire. The steppe nomads, also called Turkic nomads, became the dominant pastoral group in Central Asia, and they really benefited from this trade. They were able to rise up, maintain quite a bit of power, and make quite a bit of money because they were the people who were leading the merchants back and forth safely. It was said somebody could have a sack of gold on their back, and as long as they were being led by the steppe nomads, no harm would come to them. These people were very skilled horsemen. Uh, they could fight they could shoot an arrow with deadly accuracy while riding a horse. That shooting with dead, deadly accuracy was made possible by the stirrup. Central Asian military technologies were exported both east and west. And that's really going to change how the nomads fight. Later on, you're going to know them as the Mongols. Indian Ocean trade, guys, is made possible by technology and by natural weather phenomenon, AKA monsoons. So take a look at all the major port cities. So look at the bodies of water, the South China Sea, uh, of course, Indian Ocean, the Arabian Sea, the Red Sea. Oh, we're looking at the Strait of Malacca as well. Um, and I want you to take special note of the cities of Calicut because we're gonna come back to that later on. Malacca and Mbasa, as well as Kilwa, because these are huge cities that are really going to become centers of culture. We talked earlier about how all roads led to Baghdad, how all roads lead to Chang'an. Well, because of trade, you'll have new intellectual capitals of the world rising up. Indian Ocean trade increased between 1200 and 1500. And it, stimulated, it was stimulated by the prosperity of Europe, Asia, and Africa, as well as Southeast East Asian states. In the Red and Arabian Seas, trade was carried on by Taos. And from India onto Southeast Asia, junks would dominate the trading route. So the top photo you can see is the Dao, and the bottom photo is the junk. Notice the flat bottom. Junks were very technologically advanced. They had watertight compartments and up to 12 sails, and they could carry cargoes of up to 1,000 tons. They were developed in China, but during the 15th century, they were also built in Bengal and Southeast Asia. Indian Ocean trade was decentralized and cooperative, with various regions supplying particular goods. In each region, a certain port functioned as the major emporium for trade, in which goods from smaller ports were consolidated and then shipped onward. The Indian Ocean maritime system linked lands bordering the Indian Ocean Basin and the South China Sea. In the South China Sea, trade was dominated by Chinese and Malaysian merchants. 
in Southeast Asia to the east coast of India, it was dominated by Malaysians and Indians. And on the west coast of India to the Persian Gulf and East Africa, it was dominated by Persia, Persians and Arabs. Trade in the Indian Ocean was made possible by following the monsoon winds and sailing technology improved the existing boats. These included the lateen sail and a shipbuilding technique that involved piercing the planks tying them together and caulking them and not actually using nails. What's very important to remember is that because the distances traveled were much longer than in the Mediterranean region, traders in the Indian Ocean system seldom retained any political ties to their homelands. Instead, they formed very socially distinctive, though not politically independent, communities throughout the region. The goods traded in the Indian Ocean system included a wide variety of spices, pearls, Chinese pottery, and other luxury goods. And the volume of trade was probably not as high as in the Mediterranean. The culture of Indian Ocean ports was often isolating. So merchants who are traveling typically don't have those strong ties. Just remember that, guys. That's really important. They're going to be carrying culture with them. And it's actually not uncommon that merchants traveling along the Indian Ocean trade had up to four different families because they might only see them once or twice a year. Again, the monsoon winds. Traders and sailors would marry local women. And then what's happening is these women become the mediators of different cultures. And thus, we have cultural diffusion. Two major crops that you guys got to know about are bananas and citrus fruits. It's typically agreed that bananas originated in Southeast Asia and the South Pacific around 8,000 to 5,000 BCE. Bananas are believed to have been the world's first cultivated fruit from Southeast Asia. And then that fruit was brought west, first to Africa and then to the Americas. Citrus plants are native to the subtropical and tropical regions of Asia, Southeast Asia, near Oceania and Northeastern Australia. Now, here's the thing, guys. Domestication of citrus species is very difficult. <laughs> um, it involves what we would call hybridization and introgression, meaning people actually have to, there's some kind of science behind it, don't ask me. But essentially, you're looking at crossbreeding different plants to create a new plant, and this is how we get citrus fruits. You need to know these two. This is very, very important especially because as we know, both of these types of crops, bananas and citrus fruit, play a very large role in cuisine in multiple cultures from different continents. So looking at Gujarat and the Malabar coast. The state of Gujarat exported cotton textiles and indigo in return for gold and silver. In exchange, they produced te textiles, leather goods, carpets, silk, and other commodities. Their overseas trade was dominated by Muslims, but Hindus also benefited from this. Calicut and other cities in the Malabar coast exported cotton textiles and spices, and they also served as the clearinghouses for long-distance trade. The cities in the Malabar coast were unified in a very loose confederation. The Strait of Malacca is the principal passage from the Indian Ocean to the South China Sea. Chinese pirates preyed upon this region because numerous ships were going back and forth. But in 1407, forces of the Ming Dynasty actually put an end to piracy. The Muslim ruler of Malacca took advantage of this to exert his domination over the strait. What we're going to see, as, as I said before, throughout the Indian Ocean trade is the exchange of cultures, and that does include religion, Commercial contacts and the spread of Islam led to a variety of social and cultural changes in which local cultures incorporated and changed ideas, customs, and architecture styles from other civilizations. In the field of education, the spread of Islam brought literacy to African people who first learned Arabic and then used the Arabic script to begin writing their own languages. In India, literacy was already established, but the spread of Islam brought the development of a new Persian-influenced language, Urdu, as well as paper-making technology. And as we know, this technology came from China. We mentioned the cities that would become the centers of learning. And what we're looking at now is Timbuktu, Delhi, and Malacca. 
they're going to become very powerful centers of Islamic learning. Islam spread peacefully. Forced conversions were very rare because if people were not genuine believers, they weren't welcome. Islam brought social and cultural changes to the communities that converted, but Islam itself could and would be changed in African, Indian, and Indonesian societies. And again, this is where we have Dar es Salaam. So we have two people we're going to be talking about. Zhuang Zhang, who was a Chinese Buddhist monk, scholar, and traveler. And you can see the extent of his journey. And he's going to document everything he sees. He's do especially, especially focusing on the interaction between Chinese Buddhism and Indian Buddhism. I want you to take a look at this. So this is religion, really how it spreads. We know Buddhism spreads along the Silk Road. We know Christianity will spread along the Silk Road as well as the Mediterranean sea trade. But we also know as it spreads, it's going to change a little bit. New beliefs will be incorporated, new rules will be made, and new loyalties will be formed. And that's especially important when it comes to Christianity looking at this region, Rome, looking at Constantinople, and then looking at Alexandria, Egypt. And we'll talk a bit more about that later on. Just remember those three cities, guys. All right, the spread of Christianity. Armenia was a very important spot for the Silk Road trade. This is where quite a bit of products are going to find homes, but then new products will be added. It's a great spot, great location, because Armenia is going to lead up to the Caucasus and then this region here. A lot of trade potential right up here, guys. What we know about the spread of Christianity when it came to trade is it's kind of a twofold motive. So Mediterranean states spread Christianity to Armenia. And not only was this to spread the religion, gain new converts, but it was also to bring the people of Armenia over to Christianity to prevent Iran from having trade and control of trade in this area. That said, the transmission of Christianity to Ethiopia and other places in Northern Africa, again, this is done to prevent other people from gaining access to trade. This is why it's happening, guys. So you have not just a war of souls for conversion, but a role of, of trade and preventing people from having access to trade. We're going to move on now. Talk about that later. Speaking of the spread of religion, the Bodhisattvas, so these are two monumental Buddhist sculptures that were in Afghanistan. But unfortunately, these were destroyed by the Taliban in March of 2001. Um, these statues were declared to be idols, and therefore they were destroyed. And there's a very interesting debate right now over whether these should re be rebuilt um, or whether the space should be left as it is. All right, looking at the adventures of Marco Polo. He's an Italian merchant and explorer who traveled along the Silk Road, and he stayed in China for 17 years. And when he came back to Venice from China, he actually brought noodles with him. Fun fact for you. All right, we're going to stop here for today. I want to give you a sneak peek of what's coming. We're going to move on to Trans-Saharan trade as well as talk about the empires that rose up because of trade. And a big one we're going to focus on is the kingdom of Mali. If you have any questions, send me an email. Otherwise, have a great night, guys. Cheers.